Hey, I'm Angel. Thanks for stopping by. This is part nine of the story of how I built my head hut. That is this structure that you see behind me. I call it a mega sculpture. So I got some tree branches to contend with here. Anyhow, uh, part eight was about the eye hole, so uh, you encourage you to go back and see that if you haven't already. Part nine is about the the openings and latches and uh, the bed that I built in here. So let's get into it, shall we? Uh, let me mention, I welcome your questions, comments. Uh, this is a rough, raw, unedited, unscripted version of this story, and pretty soon I'll be wrapping up this series and then starting a new series with more polish, incorporating some of my past photographs from when I was building it and answering any questions that you have for me. So please leave your questions down below. Shoot me an email if you want to get on a list where I can uh, send you a notice when I'm getting into that new series. Anyway, let's jump into part nine of how I built my head hut. The entrances, openings, and latches, let's call it. Uh, so one thing I learned while I was building this, I learned a lot. One, of, one thing I learned was that I am not a uh, carpenter. <laughs> I, there's a lot of skills to carpentry, and I learned some of them doing this. I learned a little about routering, a little about making a square frame, and a little about different kinds of lumber. But in the end, I didn't do uh, nearly as good a job as I would have liked to, but I am proud that I got through it and finished, well, nearly finished. I still have a little little bit of latch work and, uh, you know, a few miscellaneous things to do. But anyhow, I'm trying to get in the story so I can show you how thick my walls are and kind of the frame that I have going on here. And what I did in these frames was put, um, let's see if I can get to where you can see any of that. I put metal brackets in these wooden frames and I um, I think I built them in here and as like a silly fool and then afterwards like I learned I did a lot of things on this project that I would have done totally different and that was one of them about the time I finished these four frames I was like oh I totally should have built them totally separate all the pieces on them separate square and then just attach them to my bonding but I think I put them in you know backwards or piece by piece in a pretty silly way but um any case I made these four and right now I just have these very simple cheap latches on a I'm trying to get you a picture of that it's just your basic cheapo uh you know hinge latch I forget what you even call that but a little latch and on the outside I also have one um, I didn't quite get these finished uh in the way that I wanted I wanted to make these panels match my front eyes with some decorative kind of leaf patterns but I thought I was going to stay in here a couple winters ago and I have stayed in here a little bit I'm still working on temperature control so anyways uh, you can see I made I used some pretty inexpensive lumber some basic stuff I used good treated uh, two by two by sixes for these inner frames that are, were exposed to my paper crete but these are just real cheap little one by one by two inch runners and these are little uh one inch square wood that i a lot of it i got in the discount bin at home depot and i just kind of really crudely figured it out as i went along and um yeah put yeah, these metal brackets on the corners of the inner frames to make them square to help me get them square and then i um I put in these inner things just to stop these doors against, and then I, I made these frames. These were kind of fun to make, actually, because I learned a lot about making squares, making them. And then I routed out these edges, and I put in this is Lexan, which is similar to plexiglass, only a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to cut, a little bit more expensive, a little more bendable, um, and a little bit more temperature controlling. Or, uh, efficient when it comes to heat loss and things. So, and then this is like uh, a certain kind that's double paned, corrugated. It get, lets 85% UV through, and um, it's like better than double paned glass as far as 
efficiency and I think it was like $70 for an eight by four sheet and I ended up buying two or three sheets of it for this project because each of these big eyes, I think it's three sheets, each of these big eyes took a whole sheet with just a little scraps left over because of the because of the big size of them. I'm gonna walk you around here so you can see. Um, what So you can even get a sense of this Lexan here. It is bent, it's curving just a little bit on this eye and that's a super cool thing that you can't do with glass. And um, it's also so easy to cut. It cuts just with like a razor blade, you know, a utility knife. And uh, yeah, it's really easy to cut. You, you gotta be careful, it's kinda easy to punch through accidentally. Anyhow, this is my front door frame, for lack of a better, uh, we'll call it. And I didn't, I, all my openings are not quite to code. I kind of intentionally wanted to do that because I, because I wanted to play around with that. So, um, and because this is a sculpture, not a, not a building formally. It doesn't have electricity. I'm working on some solar, solar addition options, but it doesn't have running water or restroom. It's right next to my home where the restroom is there. So, uh. Just a sculpture in my backyard or playhouse, if you will. So anyhow, this frame I did a little more work on than my side frames, as one should with a door frame. And it's actually um, pretty a little bit beefier than it needs to be for this kind of real light, again, Lexan filled double door that I use for my front. And that's just a, an in, inexpensive way to finish that off as best I could with the budget that I had. These are really rough because this is actually pallet wood that I reclaimed. These, the framing I did buy cheap lumber for, but um, these I collected pallets and I was gonna show you my bed, which I also made out of all found reclaimed wood. I found this really cool machine shop down the street from me, really close to my house. And uh, we're gonna come in here and kinda like, this machine shop has these huge pallets and I'm, I'm mentioning it because if you have a project you need wood for, you might find a shop like this. And they had these big uh, 2x12s. Can you see those? I made this bed frame out of all reclaimed wood. It took me, you know, a couple hours of, of uh, pick, getting lumber and then taking it apart. It was all bolted together. It's big, heavy-duty lumber. I'm going to show you. Uh, oh, welcome. Welcome to my hut. Have a look around. Isn't it pretty in here? I really like how the light changes constantly. Um, through the day in here and through the year, really. So uh, it's December right now. It's actually d just after Christmas, and it's kind of chilly, but it's been warm, unseasonably warm, as they say, for our parts. So, anyhow, I was going to show you. This is all reclaimed wood that I got a uh, really nice lumber from that machine shop, mostly. I got it other places, too. This deck is not. this. These Vigas and this deck wood I purchased, and sealed up and did a kind of textbook like I learned a lot on that too but this this frame here was totally experimental totally out of free wood that I gathered it's got these I'm going to try to show you up under here it's got these great um two by twelves and they're kind of got these big holes let's see if I can point in the right spot they've got these big oh that's a gap these big holes here's one um routed out because there was big you know car parts and like engines and things um on these pallets initially when and they're sh they're just shipping pallets and they get thrown this lumber like this gets thrown away if you live in a city all the time every day so if you're building a project i encourage you to look around and see if you can't find a source again for heavy duty uh heavy duty lumber look for a machine shop or you know some place that imports engines or big parts like that they uh, or big machinery or big tools they bring those kinds of things in on big pallets that then they just throw away or give away, you know, uh, people like me come and pick them up pretty fast. So, uh, I noticed I wasn't the only one out there picking them up. So anyhow, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I haven't quite finished this frame off. I'm getting ready to put some railing on it and I'm going to probably use driftwood. Although I've had some various ideas. This pole here is down to the bottom and it's going to be part of the framework of attaching there. And it's just a safety rail for the bed and also safety rail for these edges, these edges here that kind of step down there. Um, they tend to be dangerous. People, I'm, I'm worried that I or someone else might trip if I don't put in some safety rails. So I'm going to do that. It wasn't part of my initial plan, but let me show you the inside of my doorway here. I kind of have it latched off on the bottom, which is something I did with my indoor, my other four openings as well, just to, because these, this lumber being really cheap and thin tends to want to warp. Um, 
and some of it was warped initially, so I kind of had to, to force it into squares, and uh, I'm actually pretty proud of that. It doesn't look like much, but they took me quite a long while to, uh, you know, I had to buy a little special jig and cut these. I know it sounds like nothing if you've done a lot of construction or, or uh, carpentry, but for me, it was all a big learning experience, and um, which brings me kind of to my closing point, which is, don't let not knowing something stop you from doing it. I didn't know anything about any of this when I started this project. And, and lo and behold, it's almost done. And uh, yeah, I've, now I know a ton more than I knew before. And I have this cool project to show for it. And initially, I um, wasn't sure what it would look like exactly. I had a rough idea. I've had a lot of changes of mind as I've, as I've built it. And it's been really fun, really educational. And yeah, now I have all this, all these new skill sets that I learned from cutting glass, making door frames, um, pounding tire walls, digging a hole, putting in a retaining wall, building a dome, mixing all kinds of different uh, lightweight concrete recipes. Oh, let me show you the, there's an opening there too, since we're on openings. There's actually three openings up there. I don't know if you can see, there's a big round opening in the middle that's actually made out of, uh, the frame for that was a uh, bicycle tire, uh, rim, bicycle rim for a tire, yeah. And I took the spokes out and then, uh, so it gave me a nice perfectly round hole to work with up there. I put that into my initial dome frame as I was working working it all out. So that's built into the to the to the dome in the first place. And up there also you can see there's two I don't know if you can tell amongst all my pretty lights, I spent a lot of time working out those pattern that pattern on the on the ceiling there. I'm pretty pretty proud of it. Let me just give you a little tour of that too because it looks different. I know it's a terrible angle for me, but uh you can see all these all these bottles have a so I have a repeating pattern in the back. As you move around, the light shines through them. We're getting toward evening now, so it's only shining on one side. But anyhow, these other openings, let me point you again. Those silver dots there are, there's two of them, and those are coffee cans, old school coffee cans that I used as a frame through, again, through the dome. And right now they're covered with tin foil, but I, I have like coffee can lids that I can seal them up with. But in any case, that was just an experimental idea that I wanted to try. And those are just for venting. I kind of have probably more vents than I need right now. It's not sealed up real well. So um, I, I have a vent on one vent. So there's also a vent back here, right under this deck that, that my intention was to build a uh, vent going down and over a pond underneath and then cycle warm air up, up the up that hole up there. But as it turns out, this structure is actually cooler than I thought. It gets, I don't know, it gets in the upper 80s, maybe in the 90s during the summer when it's super, super hot, like over 100 in Albuquerque and, and not sealed up well. But it gets down to, you know, just under 40 in the high 30s in the winter, which is cooler than I thought it would when I initially bought it. And I still haven't, obviously, as you just saw, I still haven't really sealed up my openings really well or my vents. Oh, since I'm going through all the vents, I just remembered, I just remembered another one that I should show you. There's actually two of these little vents on the side right here. I've got these, these cords. Those are from my two little solar shed lights, but, um, and this is an extension cord that I run out there so that I can run a heater and or another, uh, light out there, more light if I want to, which I haven't in a while, but I could, I might soon. In any case, um, these were initially put in because I was going to try to collect rainwater off this dome. And, oh, you can see the, see those little silver vent covers. Uh, those are over those coffee can vents that I mentioned. Anyhow, um, these vents were put in because I thought I was going to be able to make this rain collection kind of gutter system coming out of these areas. But as it turns out, we just haven't had much rain. And so I haven't really put any more energy into that. And I've kind of shifted my mind away from because it's also not as bright in there. It's not as bright and not as warm in the head hut as I initially thought it might be. So, you know, live and learn. And there's things I can do to change that. But mostly I've just been uh, modifying, you know, my idea about what I'm going to be doing with this space as I've built it and learned so much. So those, uh, I have to show you, there's another one on the other side. Right now, those are just kind of spare openings that do need to be sealed up or dealt with at some point if I 
if I'm not going to use them for water, there's the other one. You can see I dripped some whitewash down this corner here. Any case, the water does come shooting off of, you know, these between here, these areas. This is how I get up, get up there to uh, manage my little, pl I have a little styrofoam insulation plug in my uh, top hole right now. If I need to get on the roof for any reason, I've been climbing up that way. Probably need to remove that eventually. Anyhow, for a second time, I'm going to wrap this up and say uh, this has been part nine, I think. Gosh, now I just lost count. It's been the next part in the series of how I built my head hut. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Learn a little more about my openings and latches. You can see I have some more learning to do, some more work to do, with, especially with regards to latching my my closures. But um, yeah, it's been a great learning experience. I welcome your questions and comments. And until next time, get it done.